Oh yeah. Alright, today is September 9th, 2021. My dad passed away a year ago. But he would think this is silly, and uh, I hope I can just hold it together through this. Because it was a rotten day. A year ago, it was uh, it was a rotten year. <laughs> Last year was. Yeah, you agree? yeah, for everybody, you know, not not just us, but for you know hundreds of thousands of other people too. And uh, anyway, this is the second instance of what I hope will be a new family tradition. Uh, we release a balloon, share a memory, maybe say a little prayer for the one who has passed a year ago, if you wish. It's not formulaic; it is just a remembrance. So let me tell you a little story about my dad, Leslie Edward Sauls. Dad was a working man. He valued working for what rewards life gave one. As kids, we were a little bit privileged. I mean, you know, really we were. We kids were. Me and my brother and my sister, because he provided so well. I mean, we always had shoes. We never went hungry. We always had a roof over our heads, you know, we never lived in our car, that sort of thing. He always provided well. And he always set an example as far as work went. From his youth working and being the man of the house where his brothers fell, admittedly a little short, uh, he set the example there at home, at his home as well. He had to because his own father was away serving in World War II in the Navy. And he had to be the man of the house. A little bit later, as a young man working on a boat, he told me that sometimes he slept between the engines and with his red face and his little white bandana, his co-workers called him Match. <laughs> because it was hot on that tuna boat or whatever it was. My dad valued strength. He was strong and resolute and really, he really liked strong rail, uh, male, mold, male role models like Clint Eastwood, Charles Bronson. He liked the occasional boxing match. He was not really a coarse nor a profane man, but he said the odd cuss word, and he liked dirty jokes, you know, he did. This is not to say he didn't like to play, too, though. Dad valued humor. He was generally upbeat. He joked a lot before dad jokes were even cool. Dad jokes were cool. <laughs> Once he had some stability in the family, he'd take us camping, and he loved his big outdoor dogs. We had several German shepherds. He loved his trees, he loved his little garden, and made himself laugh when he asked us kids, did you pull your five weeds today? We'd have to go out there and pull weeds out of the garden. We had, we had, as like a half an acre of corn and watermelon and green onions and just peas, and oh, I hated peas, you know. Uh, my dad, uh, while he was a good man, he was a gentle man, you know, he wasn't always that way. Uh, as a young man, he was, you know, sort of short-tempered. He, uh, he wasn't super easy to get along with the, the early years of his marriage. And my brothers, you know, you know when he was a baby, they were, they were kind of tempestuous. And uh, I, I spent the last year researching and asking my aunt my mother what happened during those years, 1964 to 1963. While they didn't super really want to talk about it, it wasn't a great couple of years. But, you know, they came back together. He built, he put his family back together, and uh, and he didn't ever let anybody take his apart. I see a cloud that looks like tape. It's a little tiny. He didn't put a huge store by the religious stuff. Mom was the one who took us kids to church and made sure that we were introduced <coughs> to a religion. Sure, he'd occasionally go, but that was because he loved his wife, and he occasionally did as he was asked. I don't know if God ever measured him by his piety. Okay, but certainly I think dad's works got him into heaven for he took care of business and the people he loved and was responsible for. Dad was easygoing. He learned over the course of his long life, 84 years, that being terse with people didn't make him more willing to do what you wanted and makes doing business very hard. He had a lot of friends around town. He seemed to know everybody. I was amazed because I drove for him as a delivery driver. I think all of us did at one point. We worked with the business. Uh, and uh, he seemed to know everybody in town in Houston. That's a pretty big feat. <laughs> uh, and he was very professional on the phone and otherwise. I liked how he knew so many people in Conroe and Houston and that he had his own delivery service in a huge city like Houston, Texas. He was liked by many people. 
he seemed to have few secrets and though his sacrifices as are all parents went sometimes unappreciated he was excuse me he was loved by us and we'll never forget him we love you dad and here's hoping the winds will carry our uh, our love and our messages of remembrance to you and little words on, the, on our balloons like we did for, for Grandmother Ruth. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I, I do. Um, I didn't really talk to him, or I never really knew him, never met him, only ever saw him once, or spoke to him once. But I do remember, um, you know, uh, the stories that Bumpy has told me before that also happened to involve his, involve his dad. <laughs> um, that he, uh, when he was in Italy, Somehow he, uh, he he must have like bumpy like punched out his car door or something, and he had to get his dad to ship one over to Italy or something. I, I did. Oh, no. I cracked my windshield. And uh, his dad was not happy about that. And um, oh yeah, when you were actually working with him in his delivery truck, you backed into some guy oh. or <laughs> something like that, and you had to had your dad go out there and talk to the guy or something like that. Uh, he was so good at diffusing that situation because I thought I was going to get killed. Seriously, I, I would, we used to go to this place called A1 Plastics and they, 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 they put a, it was like a eight foot long, five foot wide sheet of plexiglass that must have been three inches thick. It was for a tank at the Texas Aquarium or, or some museum downtown, that's what it was. And I failed to properly secure it in my vehicle, in my truck. And uh, that thing was rode all the way downtown, scratching up against a big eye that was screwed into the truck. And uh, I, I delivered it scratched and they complained to my dad. I mean, I screwed up a lot when I was a kid. I, I've had car accidents and stuff like that. And, and he, he was, Got you out of trouble. He didn't always get me out of it, but he certainly didn't ever really lose his cool like he probably, you know, some dads probably would have. So I just want to say thanks for your constant love, your support, your advice, and the occasional kick in my pants when I needed it most. Nobody did it better than you, Dad. That's what dads are for. At least what dads are for. Got him. Huh? Good. Go, go. Mine's Dancing. winning. <laughs> Mine's in the lead. I did not Place your bets, folks. Go so far. Look at that. I got them all. That's great. You're in formation. That's okay. You're making a triangle. Uh, a little different. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. I keep forgetting this one. Leave it. 
ten minutes.